All right, so we're back with the time attack build. So now that we have the seats mounted, a dash relatively in place, now it's time to actually make a steering column. I didn't want to make it beforehand because I didn't know where the seats were going to be and I didn't know where I necessarily wanted the steering wheel to be. So before any steering columns decisions were made, mount the seats, got these in. So we got passenger seat in, driver seat in, dashes in, pedals will come after the steering column because I don't want to have them in a position that compromises anything. But now that we have this mounted, we can go about making a steering column. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. So this is just a standard solid steel steering shaft, three quarter OD. I got a couple of my joints to basically serve as bearings to hold this in place. Quick release, uh, shaft collars to clamp to the dash bar, shaft collars to clamp to this to restrict it from moving around these and my two U-joints. This is just a three-quarter to three-quarter because I'm just gonna have everything be welded. I should have enough clearance to actually get everything to fish through, connect everything, and then just have it all be one piece. I don't have to worry about couplers. This is a very expensive U-joint because it has specialty splines on the end to match the Datsun rack that's in this. All right, so we have our U-joint on the steering ship steering rack down there. It's not fully seated just because it's a little bit rusty and I don't necessarily want to try and pound it on because I don't really know how to get it back off if I pound it on when it's buried under there. So we're just gonna go with that it has to go on about another three-eighths of an inch and just work with that. So as you can see we're connected there. It actually tucks under the motor mount which is what I planned two three years ago now at this point and it even ducks under the oil filter lines. So it comes through, passes through, and that's about the trajectory out. So we need to cut this down and then we'll start getting everything a little bit closer to dimensional, dimensionally what we want. And I'm trying to figure out if I want the U-joint, the secondary U-joint, if I want it on this side of the firewall or if I want it inside, I'm leaning towards outside just because it's what production does and it makes kind of sense and then what's passing through the firewall isn't at an angle and then change direction so yeah that's what we're running with right now and i'll give you an update when we know more all right so we played with the links a little bit we got our main on rack u-joint there straight piece second u-joint if you can see when it's fully on if it can focus it's just about to touch the firewall now i still need to make a kind of fill piece that then mounts one of the heim joints that i can then use essentially as a pillow block bearing on the firewall so that'll give it some depth here but then also we still need to pound it onto the rack there so that's going to add maybe that far so should be good length for this piece. Now I'm gonna focus on cutting this piece out. I just took some painter's tape, found the holes, put transfer them to this, center punch, rough cuts, and we'll go from there. All right, so we have our firewall mounting plate. This is the inside, kind of like a rough shape that I drew. Marker holes, uh, I test fit it, and all of the bolt holes line up. So then I could actually go inside the engine bay and trace out the circle. And this little hump is where the U-joint that's gonna eventually be passing through is actually sitting. So that little kind of line up and down right here, that guy, is about the center of the U-joint. So now I know when I put my, my joint and like weld it on to tab wise, I can actually point it basically straight down from here. So now I just need to kind of cut this out and probably a little bit more above it clean up the outside edge so we don't need all this excess material because that's just 
more weight. After going through and drilling our hole, that's what we have. So now we just need to weld the heim joint onto the inside and then go from there. It's coming together. All right, so we got the, the pass-through all welded up and I had to do it a couple times to get the spacing right. And it's still kind of a guess until I get the dash bar support on. But this is kind of what we have. So our three mounting holes that actually bolt to the firewall and our pass-through tab and our pass-through hole. And the basically, this sits through here and you get a jam nut on the back side and that guides the steering shaft through the firewall and connects it with the U-joint on the opposite side of the firewall. So, all we need to do now is get the dash bar support all sorted and figured out and then once we get that in, then we can kind of actually get the main links correct, get them tacked together, and then put them in the car. So, that's what's next. All right, so it is a new day. I just kind of worked last night and got to this point. So we have basically shaft collars that are welded on to little extension arms that then have a pivot and a time joint on them. And this actually pretty much, if everything was to be tight, this would be pretty adequately for strength. But it's a little low. I'd like to get it up maybe another inch or two and I have problems where it's passing through the firewall down down here it's hitting the top of that circular cutout for the pass through so we need to get that out uh, widen that hole a little bit and then put it all back together and hopefully I can get it to where I want it to be all right, so what I did for this was I just overlapped a hole saw into the existing hole, chopped it through, and then just took an angle grinder and kind of met the tangents of the circle. And doing this is actually pretty helpful because now a U-joint can actually pass right through it. So that means this can be installed separate of the steering shaft. So... Moving forward, and again, we're gonna have to move this up. So at this point, it's probably gonna be touching all the way at the top of this, but that's what it needs to be. All right, so it's been a few hours of trial and error. We got this where we want it to. That's going in a much higher profile. And this is our new support with our pass-through, and everything moves freely. So this isn't even or anything it's just kind of pressed in there so it still spins the u-joint so that u-joint spins free adequate clearance to the frame rails and then uh, let's see these are ways to actually move the wheel but that u-joint spins down there so now all that we have to really do is figure out where we want the wheel and Cut the shaft to length, and I'll probably cut it on the far side because you can always add spacers to get it closer to you if you want. All right, so this is just a 3D print of probably what I'm gonna get laser cut for a steering wheel because everything is going on the wheel. I'm not having anything on the column for turn signals or anything like that. Um, because if you don't really know, the whole reason for a column like this is so that you don't have a key tumbler lock, because in racing applications, a key can fall out, your steering column can lock up, and that can cause lots of problems. Plus, the steering column in this car literally fell apart when it took it out of it. So, had to make something or buy something, and uh, everything that I was looking at buying was super expensive and didn't really make any sense. So... Here we are, making something, but I'm really happy with where this is at this point. That is just like a mock-up 3D print, but it at least lets me know, hey, if I turn the wheel, 
does my hand hit my legs? And if I turn the wheel perfectly 90, are my hands gonna get away of my sight line? So with the steering right here, my knuckles just barely break the glass line and I don't hit my legs and it's a very comfortable position for me because I'm building it for me. I don't have to build it for 95th percentile males and 5th percentile females. I can build it exactly how I want. So we just need to get everything welded up now. Everything is exactly the length that I need it to be. Everything is clearance. Let's weld. All right, so I went through, finished welded everything, got it in the car and got everything kind of adjusted to how I wanted it to be. And this is basically the final result. We have a heim joint here, shaft collars on there, so that's holding this shaft in exactly that position which should eliminate any sort of shaft movement which helps lock down the intermediate shaft. So we turn this, tires move and thankfully a long time ago I did the math right to figure out which way to put the rack so I turn the wheel left and the wheels go left instead of the opposite because that could have easily happened. So. Quick release, Heim, second Heim down there, U-joint here, and all the way down to there. And I also did knock that U-joint all the way onto the steering rack screws in, and there was enough play within everything else to get it right where we needed it to be. So, that's it. That's how I took raw components, because no one makes a kit for this car, and made essentially a fully custom, one-off, race spec steering column. So hopefully you learned something. Maybe you didn't know how many sports you needed in a steering rack or anything like that. Steering column, excuse me. So hopefully you learned something. If you did, please subscribe, like, share, do what all the random YouTube stuff is. But I appreciate it. And until next time, see ya.